Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to paint a loose cat using the wet and wet technique. Now, don't shy away from wet and wet. It can be your best friend when it comes to super soft diffused edges. That's what we're gonna go for today. So if you wanna join me, grab your paints, let's get started. For my paper today, I'm using Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cotton cold pressed paper and it's on a block. This is just a small five by seven inch block. I only have a few pages left actually. What I love about blocks is that it just has one corner that's not glued down, but the sides are all glued down, which ensures that when you use lots of water, like on the wet and wet technique, your paper's not gonna warp or buckle. It's just gonna stay put. So for the little kitty I'm gonna be painting today, I want it to be this really pretty tan little cat with darker ears and a darker tail to really help it stand out. Now something I want to show you really quick. I need a piece of paper. Artist and I don't have any paper here my desk what okay I did these little sketches earlier to just sort of illustrate the shapes that we're going for with these kitties and we're just gonna do one cat but you can see there's a almost a snowman shape to a cat when you're looking at it from behind you've got the haunches the belly the shoulders and then the head so it's four different tiers and then of course the tail is attached to the haunches there but that's what we're gonna be imagining as we paint with our water first. Now, make sure you have some clean water. Two jars would be even better, just in case. Some paper towel for blotting, your paints, of course, and make sure that your brush is 100% clean. This is important because when you do lots of wet washes on white paper, if there's any trace of paint in your brush, it's gonna show up after it dries. So use a clean brush. I rinsed mine out. We'll see if I actually got it perfectly clean. All right, so to start out, we're going to take our clean water and paint a giant circle right at the lower portion but in the middle of our paper. And this is going to represent the kitty cat's haunches. Now, make that circle even bigger than you want to paint this cat. The reason is we want our kitty cat's haunches to be super soft and wherever your water goes, the paint will flow. So you don't want your paint to extend all the way to the edge of this thing that you're creating, but almost. So extend that water way beyond and then create the middle section of your cat with your water. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'll tilt it a little bit so you can see. Right now it's a pear shape. And then we're gonna create the little shape of the head here at the top. Now don't paint the ears with water because we want to paint those on dry paper to ensure that we get hard edges for those details. Okay, so do you see it? It's kind of like, if any of you are dog owners and you have one of those Kong balls, it's kind of shaped like that, where there's a big bottom, a medium-sized center, and a tiny little tip at the top. Snowman shape, right? Okay, so we've got our wet snowman shape. I'm just gonna add a little more water, and I'm gonna paint a little to the left here to show where the tail is gonna go. That is also gonna be super soft and fuzzy. At least that's what we're going for here. All right, so once you have your wet surface, now you're gonna to need to be a little more careful with where you apply your paint. I'm gonna take yellow ochre and mix in a tiny bit of burnt sienna, and it's just a really light tinted wash. Removing some of that on the paper towel so I don't have too much extra water in my brush. And now I'm gonna draw with this light tinted wash the center of the haunches, again using a circular motion with my brush and then the center of the cat's body. So now we have a little bit of paint and we're able to see more what we're doing here. Let's take a little more yellow ochre and paint the top of the haunches a little darker. And then the tail hinting at it over here. Can you start to see it a little bit, maybe? I'm starting to see it. A Little more yellow ochre. All right, so now paint the center of the cat a little darker, starting to gather some confidence, I hope, at this point. And then you can mark the top of the head. And if you want, just spread your brush sideways and paint that whole circle shape of the head. So now that we have some more confidence, we have a little bit of paint down, let's really create the shape of our cat. I'm liking it. There it is. Okay, I'm rinsing out the yellow ochre. And I'm gonna extend that clean water a little more even. Okay, now I'm gonna take my burnt sienna. You could also use any kind of brown that you have on your palette. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a perfect color. If you want it to be a more chocolatey brown, you can actually mix in ultramarine with your burnt sienna. 
and you can see it becomes slightly less reddish. Okay, we have to work fast if we want this to work. So drop in that burnt sienna into the tail and watch how the paint explodes. So the tip of the tail, I want it to be a darker color. And I'm creating this curved shape up into the body, a little bit of separation of the fur, hinting at some stripes, and then a shadow where that hind leg hits the floor right there. And then I'm going to darken along the top of the haunch, removing some extra water so it doesn't overly explode on the paper. And then again on the other side, rinsing out some of that. And now I can push and pull the paint a little bit to create more of the shapes that I want. Okay, let's take a little bit more. And now we'll paint the ears on. This is really gonna help us see what we're doing a little better. Okay, be brave here. Paint the triangle shape for the ears. Here's one. And you can let that touch the paper. But wow, it already dried. That dried so fast. And here's the other ear. And then a little hint at the front of the cat's face. Goodness, the head is already dry. I didn't expect it to dry that fast, but I live in Colorado. It's a dry climate, so I should have known. All right, if it is already dry or if you've reached the danger zone where it's beginning to dry and if you were to introduce more water to it, it would explode into a cauliflower, you can speed up your drying process by using a heat tool or just let it air dry all the way. Make sure it's bone dry before you do another layer. I'm going to use my heat tool on the low setting to speed up the drying. Okay, with that layer dry, we can add a second layer of wet and wet to add more color. So what I'm gonna do is actually spray the cat. This will speed up my process of applying clean water. I'm gonna take a totally clean brush and spread that water actually edge to edge just to prevent any hard edges from forming. Just to make sure, again, like because if you put down any colored water on your paper, it's going to show up after it dries. You'll see it. So notice how I'm avoiding the head for now. Just repainting with clean water over the body. Okay. So try to make sure you don't have any puddles spread around your water so that it's evenly dispersed. Then I'm going to switch back to my size 8 round brush. And I'm gonna take some chocolatey brown. I'm gonna take some transparent brown oxide. Really gonna darken up the tail now. So another layer of dark color on the underside especially of the tail. As soon as you start to add really dark values to your painting, it's just gonna look so cool. So don't be afraid of going dark with watercolor. It's the best. There, so I fattened it out a little bit. I thought the tail needed to be just a little closer to the body to just look a little fatter. And I'm gonna take some yellow ochre. We're gonna bring in some more of that golden color to the tail. And I'm just using like blotting motion with the brush, nothing overly specific. And I wanna bring some of that color into the back and also really hint at where the turn of the shoulders happens, right up here. So a little more specific anatomy right there. And I think that helps. A little more yellow ochre on this side. And then one fun thing I'm gonna add is I'm gonna take some ultramarine blue very light tinted wash, so plenty of water mixed in. And I'm gonna draw the side of our cat with that blue. This is gonna help it almost look like there's another source of light bouncing off the side of his body. We're getting a little overworked with this, I think, but oh well. Okay, so let's dry that layer. And now we're gonna add a few specific details, wet and dry. So I'm gonna take burnt sienna 
and ultramarine and mix them together for a nice dark brown, almost black even. And I'm gonna paint the underside, this little foot. And then because we dried the paper, now it's gonna be a hard edge right here. And then where the tail meets the body, and then a few specific little brush strokes showing the texture of the fur on the tail. You could also separate the bristles of your brush by spreading them out on your palette like that. And that helps you create more of a grainy texture as you pull your brush along, more of a fur texture. So I'm slowing down now as I paint these final details. These are definitely considered finishing details when you do wet and dry. And I'm just adding a little bit of fur texture in a few key locations. Now that's too dark, so I want to go a little lighter. Okay, and then one more thing, I want to make the ears standing out even more. So I'm taking pure burnt sienna on my brush and really doing a dark layer on the top of the ear. There we go. Yeah, super soft, wet and wet little kitty cat. I hope you guys liked this one and weren't too intimidated by the wet and wet technique. Obviously, it takes practice and every time you do this, if you decide to do it again and again and try different colors, it's gonna look different every time, I guarantee it. But that's the beauty of it and that's what I love about wet and wet. It's almost impossible to copy another artist when you're using this technique. So give it a go and add this to your arsenal of watercolor techniques. I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching.